Well, Andre, congratulations. That's absolutely inspiring. Thank I was, you. My first question to you was going to be, what would you say is, is, is the main message of what you've achieved? And clearly, it's achieving the impossible and perseverance. But what would you say was your, would be the, the biggest message to give to, to our industry here? You know, interestingly, initially, we didn't want to revolutionize aviation. We want to revolutionize the mindset. I mean, the, the mindset towards new technologies, new solutions, to tell the people and show the people that what is considered impossible is possible. And of course, our world is the world of clean technologies here. Uh, is, is the world of trying to use the resources we have in a, in a better way. And interestingly, you know, this airplane doesn't use any oil to fly, but it's made out of oil for 90, or oil products, or, uh, for 98%. 98% of the material we use in this airplane to make it light, to make it efficient, comes from your industry. And I think that's a fantastic message. And we all always think about the uh, petrochemical industry as polluting, as the source of problem, not understanding that it's the source of solution. And that's what we try to put forward. Absolutely. And there's obviously very serious initiatives here in, in, uh, in the UAE and in the Gulf towards R&D and to innovation, and especially with examples like Mustar, like you cited, uh, which has achieved a lot in the last 10 years. We have a question here, which actually was, a, was, was something that I wanted to ask you. One point you made was, well, we, we, after all that research and 13 years of testing and trying, you were up there, uh, but, and yet, you weren't sure if your battery, for example, would last once you were above the ocean that morning. What was your backup plan? And this is the f one question here we have up here on the screen. What if that red had expired? What, what were you thinking at that point? If that actual question had not been answered in a test case scenario before you took off, what was your uh, thinking behind that? There was no backup plan in the sense of technology because we couldn't afford the wait. Well, I, th I think the decision was maybe different. Instead of trying to uh, have a backup plan and think about worst case scenarios, we tried to make our system the safest with the best efficiency to increase the chance. And I think that's the choice we have often in, in life. Huh? We can either work with two bad solutions and we have backups, or try to make one solution the best. And that's what we, uh, that's what we focus on. That's the reason why we went step by step. Uh, we did flights over land. Uh, we did then fly over the ocean to be able to build up slowly. But of course, you know, when you try something new, you never know. I think you have to accept the risk. You have to accept that you, uh, that you go into something which has not been explored today. And I think that's part of the excitement of such a project. Uh, that's part of the risk as well. But you have ways, in fact, to minimize the risk as much as you can. So it's to find the right balance. OK, and I mean, I'd like to address the, the point of partnership. Clearly, this was instrumental in getting this project off the ground from an investment point of view and also from a technical support uh, point of view. Uh, we have a question here which addresses that. Who was the real supporter to this project? Um, and can we say tomorrow we'll be f flying such a solar airplane, i.e. on a consumer level? So how important was that partnership? And what's next? Are you looking to do more with the partners that you had on this project? What's your next... Uh, Ambition. Partners were critical, of course. I mean, on one side, we knew that we had to design and find the solution ourselves, but we didn't have the technologies. Uh, so we brought 80 partners uh, in different fields. You know the two partners from your industry, uh, Solvay and, uh, and Covestro. And I think uh, with Solvay, we started extremely early, developed 50 or worked on 50 different questions from these 50, 15. Uh, was integrated into the airplane. And the life was not easy for somebody because I told them, it's not because you are part that you, have your pro that you have your product in the airplane. You have to be better than other solutions because that's the only one, that's the only way to, uh, to uh, succeed. So we replaced metallic part with plastic. We found a way to better encapsulate the solar cells against protecting them against humidity, UV, and so on. We made better insulation material for the batteries. In fact, the batteries were so well insulated that they became 
too warm when I reach uh, Hawaii. And these insulation materials go into refrigerators simply today. So the motivation of our partners was not to build a new aviation industry. The motivation of our partners is to find solutions for their own customers, for their own world, for cars, for home buildings, to make their customers, to make their application more energy efficient, better use of uh, resources. So now what comes next? Think about the airplane on two dimensions. On one side, it's an electric airplane. Uh, it's an airplane uses, using electric propulsion, like you have electric cars. On the other side, the source of energy is solar. But we could have any source of energy. I mean, we wanted to have an airplane which flies forever. But if you go uh, on, uh, on, uh, on vacation uh, and you want to fly to, uh, to Miami, you'd need an airplane which flies 10 hours, 12 hours, but you don't need an airplane which can fly six months. Uh, so the solution will be different and can be different. But what's clear today is that electric propulsion has a great potential. When we started, people said, oh, interesting, but no future. Today, NASA, Airbus, Boeing, they're all working on projects using electric propulsion. It will start on small airplanes. Uh, it will take more time on large airplanes. But imagine what you can do with this. Uh, electric propulsion is efficient. 90% efficiency versus 30% efficiency for combustion engine. It's quiet. Potentially, it will be uh, clean when we can store the energy. So you can have, in a few years, uh, aircraft which can take off vertically, which can fly horizontally fast, which can be part of an urban transport strategy, quiet, not polluting, integrated in the global uh, air transport solution, air, air transport uh, strategy. So what is science fiction and what science fiction yesterday can become a reality. And again, in fact, what will be used to build this aircraft are materials from the industry. Uh, so we have discussions with our partners now to continue working on these solutions. We want to be part of this solution as well. I think we have you know, 13 years of experience in the different technologies which will be needed in the future. And, uh, and this represents, I think, a fantastic opportunity. And again, as I said, I mean, new industry is part of the work which has to be done to make our world cleaner and more efficient. Yeah, and I, mean, I think that the main, the main, as you said, any, that, that all the advantages of, of electrical powered uh, vehicles, if you like, whether they're cars, as you said, the Tesla model, which has obviously been very successful, despite initially a lot of opposition uh, and criticism as to whether it would work. Uh, and now with airplanes, as, as you have proven, and the question of always is, you know, when, when, will it, when is it commercial? We, you know, even if you find the technological solutions and get the partnership uh, of the industry here, for example, to contribute to that, the question is, well, when is, you know, day zero in terms of when this, this becomes viable and commercial uh, on, a, on a consumer level? And um, you said a few years. What would be your take on whether, when, when this could be carrying passengers on short-term flights, let's say? We have a first a electric airplane flying already in Switzerland. Uh, it has, uh, with, with the existing batteries, it has an endurance of an hour, an hour and a half today. We can have easily, for the time being, a range extender using a generator, so using petroleum as a source of energy, slowly, in fact, decreasing the hybrid part and increasing, of course, the storage part. Uh, now, for the vertical takeoff technology, we can have a prototype in uh, three to four years. It has to be certified. It has to be integrated into the world of aviation. I think thanks to the fact that we have so many drones now. Uh, we have Google, Amazon, for example, working on small drones to carry products from one place to the next. We will have to understand to make it safe. So there is a lot of money going into this field. And I have the impression that we may have autonomous flying before we have fully autonomous driving on the ground. We will have autonomous driving soon in cities where it's extremely well organized, but everywhere it will take more time. And we'll achieve the same in the air. So between five and ten years, we will have these technologies starting, uh, started to be available for uh, transport. But this is going to be light transport at the beginning, four people, six people, a little bit like cars. 
And of course, technology will move up uh, on, uh, on larger airplanes, but this uh, lets the, uh, really the, uh, the large industry to, uh, to work on it. And I would think more 2030 to have electric transport airplanes. So it will take a bit more time. Mr. Borschberg, thank you very much. Congratulations. We had a lot of more questions for you, perhaps in the coffee break. Uh, some of you will have a chance to meet Mr. Borschberg and put your questions to him. Congratulations again, and thank you very much for a fascinating thank you. presentation and, and mission. Have a thank great you day. Very thank much. you very Goodbye much. Goodbye, and take your seat.